afternoon, everyone. It's Chris from Solstice ATR as well as Axel. You can find us on the website, Twitter, Instagram, as well as Discord. Remember to hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. It's for free. So you can give us your commentary, let us know what you think, and we're here to help you out. Remember, we use this for illustration use. We're not a broker dealer. We trade side market, up market, as well as down market with no bias. Let's go to the first slide that I have up here. This will be very good education for you to take a look at the overall market. And here we're using the Invesco electronically traded fund, which is the RSP. And I put the 2007 through 2008 reset showing the overall market when we had that kind of a reset. I used a, um, a, a rainbow color on different moving averages with a Bollinger Band to calculate the risk involved in the overall market when we had the recession after the real estate bubble and the recovery till about 2012. Remember, the charts are not very similar to the 2020 market, but I want you to adapt to the overall market to understand, hey, we are still in an uptrend. We created um, a range bound up here when we pushed up. There was this consolidation here before the breakout. We retested it, tried to rally, and we eventually fell through. And we continued lower till 2009 before the recovery in 2009, 2010. And by 2011, 2012, we recovered most of the downside risk of the S&P 500 or the equal weighted on the RSP. Let's go to the next slide here. And what, what I did, I did a comparison between the uh, COVID uh, 2020, March 23rd to February uh, 19th. And I took the 2021 basically low to the rally in 2022. In 2022, we had the reset. We had a secure low in October. We consolidated for a while in 2023. We came out of this, uh, this box area here, which was consolidation for almost two years. And we eventually broke out in 2024. We retested this area, rallied up. But if you can see this area here, after this large consolidation, we are above those averages I am using. The, uh, this is a rainbow color that I've developed over the years. It gives us some kind of an indication to stay bullish or bearish. And I have not retested the backside of those moving averages until I do. We are still in an uptrend. We are creating this consolidation here. We had a bigger consolidation down here, even coming back to the F3 or the backside of this consolidation from the prior month when we had that low. We have to pay attention to the overall market without being biased. Let's go to the third slide. And what I did here in the third slide, I used the S&P 500 E-mini as well as the NASDAQ E-mini 30-minute bars. And what I did, I used the volume profile is on the left and the time spent, which are called monkey bars or time spent, is on the right side. We do have a value area high and a value area low. This is the cloud. And I marked them with the little arrows. And the time spent, I marked the time value area high and the time value area low with a gray box showing you where the time spent in relationship to the time spent on the net and the volume profile, which was lower. And the point of control was lower on the S&P as well as the NASDAQ. But the overall value and the time spent on the NASDAQ as well as the S&P, the time spent is in uh, green and the point of control is in red color. So this is the volume. This is the time spent. The time spent was higher. So if I take the high and low of the S&P or the NASDAQ, I did not mark the values high. You can see up here I have the open high, low, as well as the close on the NASDAQ, but I did not mark them. I marked the high on the S&P, the open, the low of the S&P, and the close, they're marked in a box, and the close is marked in a triangle. So the time spent was higher compared to the point of control. I'm expecting the sentiment to reverse and can go back higher. But if we end up continuing lower on Monday, I am not biased. We're going to trade what we see in relationship to retracements and fibs, and we understand that the levels can exceed to the upside or downside. And you can go back to the prior week range where I put the volume profile for 10, 15 days, and I'll show the 
on the overall market. And what I said, be careful if we look above and fail, which we've failed the 55, 69 area, 67. When we came back and looked at the 53, we sold off. And on on Friday, we looked at the 55, 13, couldn't hold it. And we sold off further and we came to close at the 55. 403. So this is a hundred point down in the S&P 500. In the NASDAQ, you can see we had a major sell-off from the way the open was, which was the 18.920. Let's call it to the low uh, and the close of 18.377. That's quite a bit of points on the NASDAQ as well when we sold off. Let's go to last but not least. You can check us out at Solstice ATR. Get in contact with us. This is the best number to get in contact with us. The 949-414-8484. Give us your commentary. Let us know what you think. And once again, I'm going to go back to the beginning of the slide in case you need the information later to pick it up. Here I put the RSP five-year weekly Invesco equal weighted ETFs instead of using the SPY or the QQQ. The NASDAQ, what I wanted to show... This was the February 19, which we opened. We fell off. The March 23rd was the reversal. We had this major gap here. You can see it. This was the low of 2020. We had the January low. We rallied to 2022. Then we looked above in 2022, sold off. 2023 was an inside year. If I create a box in here, what we're going to do is get a box to show you that this consolidation after we broke out, I can take this area here, which was the low in October. You can see this area. We can mark it. You can see that October low. I can grab this area. Consider that that's a secure low. And after the breakout, you can see where we broke out of that 155 area because we looked above this area. We are in the second consult. You can see that this was the consolidation. Then I do have a secondary area where the consolidation was at the 158 all the way through here, coming back, you know, breaking above this area. We are still not below that secondary consolidation. We have not fallen to the backside of that 158.83 in the RSP and looked at the 2022 highs as well as the 20. Uh, 23 high so keep an eye on those areas in case they end up acting as support for a bounce and this is your 50 simple moving average we can see the iris size getting a little bit exhausted we're having a higher low but we're going to trade what we see not what we think and this is very important and i will use the to show you the difference between the spy and the value equal weighted s p 500 Let's take a look at the SPY. We can see that the SPY in 2022, where the highs were in 2021, we sold off. We had a secure low in October, November, rallied up, but we consolidated this October. If I draw an uptrend channel, we are still in the uptrend channel on the day, on the weekly. We are testing the 18 simple moving average. We have the 50 here and we have the 32 between the 18 and the 50. I do have a 32, which is sitting at 522.30. Even coming back and filling this portion of this gap, what I want to show is we had this consolidation. We eventually broke out in this area here for the year. What I want to do is go to the annual chart instead of the daily. We're going to go custom. We're going to go for the whole year. I'm not going to look even behind me for the prior year. What I'm going to do is look at the daily chart. And what I wanted to show on this daily chart, where could this be an M pattern? We do have this gap here. You can see there was a gap here. We rallied. We came back, retested. We didn't fill 100% of it. We pushed up. We rallied again. We tested it here, rallied up, and we... Are we going to fall and fill this major gap down here? Possibly. So what we can do, edit the property. And I'm going to go till, let's say, November 10, 9 of 20, uh, 24. Remember, we have elections coming up in November. Plus, we have the Federal Reserve Board trying to reset the overall market because this consolidation up here after this gap, we tested, bounced off fell back in. This is this is what I consider the August secure low. If this is not secure when we fall this gap, I'm looking for the backside of this area, which has filled this oval down here. So if I take a look at this consolidation in this area after the breakout, this area should act as, let's just grab here. 
I want to show this area here to this consolidation up here. Where is it? That would be about right here at the F6. You can see this consolidation here, retesting, falling halfway, rallying up and coming back down between here and here. There's a tiny little small gap that most people won't see unless you put it on the charts. This was retested. This is no longer valid. We're going to remove it remove this drawing and I want to show this little tiny gap in here to show the overall range in the market edit the property in case we do come in in case we do come in next week and we test this area fall through it this is a very important area that it has to hold if it doesn't you got the backside of this breakout of this uptrend channel where we filled 100% of this gap by this candle engulfing down. Do we continue break here, get to the 116, the backside of here and reverse back up? Or do we fall to this consolidation where we broke out of eventually to the upside and your 200 SMA is down here? Is the RSI coming back down below the 38.2 Fib? Yes. Can it continue to the 2023 20, 15 area? Yes. That means if it's going to fall, I'll take the distance between the weekly high and low. This is day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. You can see this what this area. What I want to do is do a measured move on the SPY. What we're going to do, go to an intraday chart. On the intraday chart, I'm going to use 20 days or 30 days. It doesn't matter which way you go. We can use 30 days and we're going to use... Um, six hour charts and the reason it gives you four candles the overnight is in gray area that black area is the United States open in the east coast and the close of 5 p.m. on the futures and what I can do take a look at the weekly high and low without including the prior week Friday so I can take this area here to this area here I just want to mark it to show you how it looks like remove the drawing and what we're going to do is go get a measured move from the high to the low and these are my extensions in case i do fall in the range of 50 minus 80 to minus 100 and reversing back this will consolidate between this candle you can see it and this one here this was the breakout at the 80 percent reversing back up and if i do end up turning back to the upside we got to pay attention to the levels in case i reverse and i do clear the 50 Five, I mean, 551 and 20 cents continuing back to the upside of uh, $557.75 reversing back up. So we're going to trade what we see on the opposite side. We have the extensions to the upside. So I am not biased even with this downtrend. There is a lot of volatility in the market because we were consolidating after the holiday for more than 10 days after this breakout. We took out this breakout. We're still holding this area and this tiny gap in here, which is filled. And let's see what the market will do in the overall market because if I take the overnight off and I put it on a four hour let's do this to show everybody and I'm going to go in the style in the setting you can see the futures here I show extended hours if I take the extended hours off and I push apply watch what's going to happen you'll oops style setting I probably did not it's in the equities equities unhighlight it apply it push okay Here's your gap. So remember, we trade what we see, not what we think, and trade levels to understand. Because if you don't have to overnight up, you're not going to see the action in the Asian European markets. So this is a way to look at it. So we're going to go back in the style. We're going to go back in the setting. In the equities, we highlight and extended hours. In the futures, we do the same thing. We apply it so you can see the overnight action where that gap is in relationship to those candles. If we do fall through here, look for this gap to fill. If we get a bounce, that's great. There was a couple of days consolidation here. You can see it. It created like a W or an inverted crab looking up with the arm going across. Then we consolidated coming back to this area. It either acts as support. And if it falls through, it's going to look for the other side of the extensions. Let's... Good day. Micro.
EST. Reason why I am using the micros, we can see that most of all the S&P 500, when we fell through where the low target was in relationship to the average true range, it was 88 points. We ended up losing 100 points and the volume weighted average is sitting at 54, 58 and a quarter or 50. It depends how you look at it. When we came out of compression, we were in a bearish tone. The sentiment was lower on short term was down, midterm was down, long term was down on the four hour and you can draw a linear regression downtrend channel in that trend. In case I do get a reversal up here, that's great. If not, and we do continue, I'm looking for the extension of the 80 minus 100 before the reversing back up. And if vice versa, it goes up, that would be great in the S&P 500. So let's take a look at it on the NASDAQ micro NQ. And I'm going to do the Russell as well. You can see that the NASDAQ has a little bit from the prior week. It created that rounded top. It looked above here. You can see it came in consolidated. We tried to go back up and eventually fell down. If this is creating a lower high that, because of the sector rotations in the technology sector, because it did not hold this area, we're going to look for the backside of those consolidations. So that measured move, this is the Thursday, Friday area, if I take the high and low of this week and measure it because we had a short week due to the labor, we can edit the property and I will extend it going back all the way for a couple of weeks so that way everyone can see it. We'll go one month out. So you can see the extensions where they are, where the 50 is, where the 25 or the 23 is in relationship to the bottom end of a minus 78% to 100 and vice versa if it goes to 161 and reversing back up to the opposite side on the micro NQ. Let's do the Russell. And I'm going to go to the daily and the weekly on the Russell. Let's go to the weekly three year. I wanted to show after the 2021 high, the Russell was fell down, consolidated in 2022, couldn't go up. 2023, that was the high. We tested this area of consolidation where that big box is. And the NASDAQ is, the Russell is actually, I said the NASDAQ, the Russell is actually holding this territory where it broke out of. If I come in to this area here, I don't want to bring it to the top, top of the 2020, uh, uh, 2022 coming back down. I wanted to use the 2023 breakout retest one third of the move rally up coming back to this area testing the 200 sma as well as the 50 is healthy which is the 50 and even coming back to the 61.8 which is the 116 and 200 and if we end up losing this area i'm looking for the backside of this consolidation area to hold and continue higher because they may be sector rotation and on the daily if i go to the daily chart you can see where that level we looked above failed looked above failed looked above failed we tested this area at the 197 area 196 if we end up holding this area that would be great and if we end up falling back down, coming back to the backside of this consolidation where the breakout happened, so be it. So it would be around the 189, 190 area, 188. So this is in the small cap. So don't be biased. We're going to trade what we see. And I'm going to go back, do the micro and can show you how to do it. I'm sure if I did it on the chart, well, we did here. And you can see where that consolidation is. And on the daily chart in the micro anchor, you can see this ovals. I had them here for a long time. This is basically showing where that gap is. Even if I take these out and we're going to remove them because I kept them for a long time. Remove the drawing. Remove the drawing. And I'm going to remove this area because we never retested it. This is the oval and you have this candle here. So what I want to do is instead of using the oval, I'm going to activate it. Watch what we're going to do. We're going to use this to know where our level is in relationship to where that gap is. So we're going to trade what we see. If this is not going to hold a 200 SMA, I'm looking for the 50 for support. If there's no support and this candle doesn't support it and this one, in this area at the 172 i'm looking for the back side of this gap fill or 100 percent of retracing going back up so we're going to trade what we see not what we think and this is the most important thing in trading try not to be biased and you can see that the rsi is in a downtrend if i do 
uh, downtrend channel on it and I connect these dots you can see them um, what we're going to do is activate it a little bit more efficiently activate so I'm going to grab this area with this candle down here so more or less we are in a downtrend coming down in a fan if I use a fan Fibonacci fan and I do it from the peak to the slow here what I wanted to show you it's the same thing as that auto channel that I put remove what we're going to remove is that downtrend channel and you can see that those Fibonacci's work in the same way that's the 50 that's the 38 or the 61 and that's the 30 coming back to this area and bouncing off these Fibonacci level is a very important area to trade what we see not what we think and use regression channels support and resistance level so that way you understand this is a support level this is a support level if this is broken down since we broke this area we broke this area we're retesting this candle and right here and it holds that's great if it doesn't you look for the bottom if it reverses you look for the top and the break out of these candle because you had those four days taking us out not including because Monday was a holiday remember we, we didn't come in because of the labor weekend so we sold off we had two days and the Nasdaq sold off so does it continue to come here to the 250 or do we go down here or do we reverse back remember is there a sell-off in the market and are people getting rid of their positions in the long-term holdings if it is you trade to the short side if Friday was setting up that way because of the Nasdaq situation if the sentiment changes and we reverse back I'm going to show you how to do the the the, the fibs again here you can see how well they do act coming back even down to here is healthy it doesn't mean that the volatility is bad we're going to trade what we see not what we think I hope this video was enjoyable give us your commentary check us out on Instagram Twitter Usually I tweet every day in the morning. Also, Cecilio, take care.